Hey everyone, Brendan Sander here. How are you? Thanks so much for joining me and welcome to another episode of New Music Finds where I like to collect together all the different things that I've purchased over the past week and present it to you, give you a little bit of background on it. And I get it from different places. Of course, I get it from my local record store, but I also order off of like eBay, Amazon, you know, any other place, basically wherever I can find music, I will find music. No worries in that department at least. Uh, so I got some cool things here. I got 10 things. I don't have as many as I usually do, but these are still very interesting and exciting things that I can't wait to share with you. We'll do it in just a bit. But before we start, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do. Also, leave a comment, hit like. All those things help support my channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, if you turn on notifications, you'll never miss an episode. You're going to stay up to date on everything just like this with new music finds or hopefully some of this stuff either turns you on to uh, something new that I'm showing you here or reminds you about something that you got in your collection and you pull it out. Because if you're anything like me, you got 12,000 CDs, sometimes you forget that you have stuff. And it's always great to be reminded of something. Go, hey, you know, I haven't listened to that in a while. I want to pull that out. So that happens to me all the time. I often use actually like what's going on in the news, uh, new albums that are getting ready to come out that I want to warm up for, that kind of stuff, and I'll pull things out accordingly. So with this next one here, I certainly did that. I'll talk about it briefly in a minute, but the first one up was one that really blew me away. It's the brand new John Anderson and the Band Geeks. True is the title of this thing. John Anderson being the former lead singer for Yes, uh, hasn't done an album like this in five years, 1999, 1999, uh, 2019, hasn't been that long, 2019, he did 1000 Hands Volume 1, but we haven't seen a Volume 2 from that, and I don't know what's happened with it. Hopefully, we will get some of that stuff. Apparently, there was enough material for it, and I kind of was surprised that uh, this came out, although this was sort of unplanned, spur of the moment. He had put together the band geeks or got them to back him up. They went out on the road and it went so well and they had such a good time they decided to record together. But it was just a backing band sort of a thing. Now, turned into an actual recording project. And I'll tell you what, if you're a fan of Yes, if you're a fan of progressive rock, this album's for you. This thing here is such a classic throwback to the 1970s era progressive rock sound that Yes spearheaded that you'll pop this thing on and you'll literally think you've been transported back in time. And John Anderson, for being, I think, what, like 79? So amazing. Uh, his vocals, I can't even believe that uh, him being the age that he is can still sound as great as he does. But all in all, very good album. If you've heard the first two singles, True Messenger, Shine On, the rest of the album is just as classic and good as that. Have done a full review for it. If you're interested, you can check the link for that. That'll also be in there. Um, and what I was talking about before, where I said pull stuff out. So, of course, I dove into my collection and pulled out a bunch of John Anderson solo Yes, and Yes Related. I pulled out last year's 2023 Trevor Rabin album called Rio. Uh, the Yes album, Mirror to the Stars. Like, I just pulled all that stuff out and I was having a whole progressive rock weekend. Uh, enjoying what I was hearing new on the John Anderson, but just more stuff along in those lines. And hey, that's why it's always great to have a big music collection so you can pull from it whatever you're in the mood for. Same thing happened with this next one here. Jimmy Jameson, uh, unfortunately he's passed away, but uh, an archival album from the vaults recorded in 2007, title of it, Jimmy Wayne Jameson. Okay, why is it called that? Because it is a country rock album. Recorded in 2007, all the songs written with Jim Petrick, fellow Survivor bandmate, keyboardist and guitar player. And this was just something that Jimmy Jameson, who had always been a fan of country, he grew up with it, his mother played it for him, big fan of Hank Williams, all that sort of stuff, wanted to make this album. And this is definitely more leaning towards the rock side than the country side of things. But there is that twang, there is that southern vibe to it. Uh, it does have... Uh, some of the key characteristics of what makes something country, the fiddle or, or different instrumentation like that. But it's not so in your face that if you're a rock fan, you can't enjoy it. So this was kind of a very cool thing uh, to get. 
Uh, it's the second of the archival releases he put out, or he, but his estate released one called Rock Hard, an album recorded in the early 90s that never got released. That one being an actual AOR melodic rock style. This one, 2007, but a country rock thing. And I've done a one minute review of this that I posted as a reel on YouTube. So uh, if you're interested in that, you can check that out. I'm going to try and start doing a little bit more of that sort of stuff to keep you guys up to date on some of the cool albums. And I'm not doing full reviews on, but I really want to, you know, sort of put the spotlight on for you guys. So I'll be doing some of that. And of course, while I was listening to that, that album, I was pulling out Survivor. I pulled out that earlier Jimmy Jameson album, Rock Hard, the archival one. Then I pulled out his actual first and uh, solo album they put out right after leaving Survivor. And of course, I had to pull out Survivor. So, so much great stuff in there. It gave us such great music. Okay, uh, this is a, a release from earlier this year that I didn't pick up at the time. The group is called Palace, and this particular release here is called Reckless Heart. And it was one of those ones that I just saw the album cover, and I immediately knew this has got to be right in my wheelhouse. And it certainly was. I didn't pick it up at the time because it, not that it sounded like everything else, but it did just sound like I expected. It didn't say blow me away or anything like that. But it's been in the back of my mind, and it popped up recently when I was looking for other music at a time when I didn't really have anything that was coming. And I thought, hey, you know what? I'm in the mood for some new stuff. I love my classic stuff, but I want some new stuff. And this popped up, and I said, you know what? Let's give it a go. Let's check it out. And so I went ahead and picked it up, and I'm really glad that I did. They've got a bunch of other stuff out, um, but this one here, newest one from 2024, uh, definitely worth checking out. And now as I was talking about where I like to get ready for new releases, so a couple of weeks back, I announced a new, well, sort of new, super group called Kings of America, and beginning with the M, not A, uh, Kings of America, and that was new to me. I had not heard of this band before. And it has uh, Steve Overland in it from FM. It's got Jim Mathos from Fate's Warning. And I immediately was sort of like, wow, why have I never heard of these guys? And I found out that the new album that's coming out is their second album, follow-up to the debut, this one here. And so I immediately was excited that I could go out and buy one and listen to it and warm up for the new one. So I'm now very excited about that brand new upcoming album. But I got this one here to tide me over. Self-titled release, cool album cover. Um, it's more in the hard rock vein than the metal vein that Jim Mathos does. But good stuff. So if you can imagine Jim Mathos and his style of playing... But instead of having someone like uh, your typical uh, metal singer, uh, like he does with Fate's Warning and some of the other projects he has, he has Steve Overland, uh, someone who is a killer rock vocalist, uh, more AOR melodic rock sounding, doing it. So it's a great, very interesting pairing of the singer and guitar player on here where you wouldn't necessarily think that the two would work well together but I have to say I'm pleasantly surprised this album has been getting a lot of spins for me so if you're unfamiliar with them I highly recommend check out Kings of America and then you guys been flipping through on YouTube or Reels or any of these other places um, you know, and you, you get the little videos and it pops up and it's got a band performing and they say, we want to send you a free CD. Well, this seems to be a really big thing that's going on right now. And I finally took one of the bands up on it. Small Town Titans is the name of the group. Uh, this is called The Ride. I think it's their latest album and it's a deluxe edition. This is a 2019 release. It adds in three bonus tracks on it that are acoustic songs and... I don't remember which was the one that was playing, but one came on and it was metal, but it was rock and the vocals were kind of unique on it. And the sort of stop and start, the rhythmic play of how they did it was a little unique and it caught my attention. And I just said, okay, you want to send me a free CD? I'll check it out. Now, here's the thing. If none of you guys have ever done this, and I say there's nothing wrong with this, but it's not really free. 
The shipping on it, I think, was $5.99. So it is a free CD, but you got to pay for shipping. So does it really cost $5.99 to send it? Probably not, because it took a good solid week or longer to get to me. And I would tend to say it cost a couple bucks to ship because, you know, it's a light little cardboard thing and it wasn't uh, any kind of express shipping. So they're making a few bucks per CD. They are paying for their shipping on it. Again, nothing wrong with that, but it's not really free. And so I probably won't be doing more of these things, but these bands that say they want to send me free CDs, I want them if they're legitimately free. And then, of course, I would go out and buy more stuff, buy them if I really dug them or download more stuff. But I was also a little bummed that it was just a cardboard thing in a sleeve like this. But again, what am I complaining about? It's a free CD, I know. So I'm just pointing it out there. I'm letting you guys know I chose to go through the experience and it came out a little different than I thought. Do I love the album? I do. I'm actually really glad that I got it. So next time I see something from this band, I more than likely will shell out and get whatever that is. But right now, uh, this is Small Town Titans. Check them out. You can stream them. If they pop up on your thing, maybe you want to give them a try. But pretty cool. Free album. Um, and so I got that in as well. And then, uh, you know, always making trips to my local record store, Sound Exchange, with uh, Anthony Coviello. Love to film there. You guys see all the videos that pop up. But hey, if I'm going to be in the store, I'm always going to shop for stuff. And if you didn't already see it, um, I had filmed another episode on Sea of Tranquility with Pete Pardo um, and Scott and uh, Grant. And so the guys that are on there, we do this uh, about once a month. We get together and we discuss if something is prog or not or kind of what is it because some of this stuff is um, uh, pump rock and, and other different things that are like that. But bands that are very hard to classify. Well, the one that we did this this past uh week or whatever, but you know, for the past month uh, that just recently posted was an entire video on Steely Dan. Well, I was actually shy three or four albums on Steely Dan, so I'm slowly filling those into my collection and I picked up three more. The Royal Scam. And here's the interesting that I'm finding. I never had kind of ventured much further because the albums that I did have not that they didn't overly impress me, but they didn't blow me away. I liked them for what they were. Um, and I've gone and I've seen the band three, four, five times maybe. So I am a fan of the band, but it was just one of those things that I didn't really feel I needed it in the collection kind of a thing. And I'm finding out these later day era albums from them, I'm actually liking way more than the earlier albums which had the hits on it that I knew. The first uh, first album, the third album, both had the really big hits on it, Ricky Don't Lose uh, My Number or That Number, and uh, Reeling in the Years off the debut. So all of those sort of things was why I had stuck with those. I'm finding out that I like these better. And so that was kind of a cool thing. Uh, that album, I don't remember which one in the cycle that is. I think this was the fourth studio album, Katie Light. It was the first one that they did after uh, not or deciding to no longer tour to be a studio only band. And so it's got an entirely different flavor than the first three albums on. It's also the first one where there was more studio musicians as opposed to a real band effort. Uh, Skunk Baxter had left. So that was the other thing. I'm a big fan of uh, Jeff Baxter, but it, you know, his nickname Skunk, Jeff Skunk Baxter, had left. And Without him, I felt that they had lost that rock flair, so I never really ventured beyond. But again, found out I really enjoyed this. It's a different thing, but I really enjoyed it, and I love this one. I'm starting to feel like this could become my favorite album. I don't know, but consistently all the way through, I love that. And I didn't have their final album, Everything Must Go, mostly because Two Against Nature didn't really do it for me. It just sounded kind of run-of-the-mill Steely Dan. It didn't sound like anything special. This one here is a lot better than that. So, you know, just goes to show you don't uh, judge a book by its cover. Always explore all the releases by a band to really know whether or not uh, 
you don't want something in the collection. But I also like taking my time doing the collections, not just running out and buying everything. If I uh, sort of not lose interest, but the excitement sort of passes on, wait till there's another time that I get that sort of excitement and want more. And that's what happened after talking about Steely Dan for an hour on Sea of Tranquility. Got me really worked up about it. I was listening to Steely Dan that whole weekend. And I thought, hey, next time I go to Sound Exchange, I'm going to see if there's a bunch of stuff uh, of the remasters used. All of these were, uh, you know, are the remasters and they were used copies. So I didn't have to shell out too much for them. So that was very nice as well. And I've been picking up a bunch of White Snake stuff uh, over the past so many weeks. You've seen that. Well, this is White Snake related because I now have all of the White Snake remasters from the early years. I now filled in all the holes in my box set collection. So I might well be at literally everything White Snake has put out officially, including some compilations that I was missing. So I don't know, I'm sure I'll come across something in the future and realize I didn't have it and get one more thing. But for now, at least I think I've completed all of that. So I picked this up, Alaska, Heart of the Storm. Uh, I think this was their second release. This is a Bernie Marsden offshoot project. And it's much more AOR melodic rock sounding, kind of like Asia, much less than White Snake sounding, but still good. Just because Bernie Marsden's in the lineup, I wanted it. And I had some of this back in the day. I've got a best of, I've got a live album, but I never had the two individual albums. And so I found this one with three bonus tracks on it. It's long out of print. Uh, still a very good deal, so I picked it up from Anthony, was glad to get a hold of that. And then last week, Devin Allman dropped a brand new album, I think called Miami Moon. And I talked to you guys about it in the What Just Dropped episode, and I was planning on picking it up because it kind of sat with me for a while. I just checked it out and listened to it, but I didn't really... Um, you know, devour it or get into it. And I kind of kept sitting there and I kept thinking, eh, I might want to pick that up. I'm not sure. Then when I finally went to go do it, it was back ordered. So I wasn't able to get it. Then I went to Sound Exchange. They didn't have it. So I decided to pick up something else by Devin Allman and his band Honey Tribe in the album Touch. So um, just good Southern rock, bluesy hard rock, uh, definitely in the vein of the Allman Brothers, but maybe a little more rock than the Allman Brothers. I'm slowly finding out that out of the Allman Betts band, which I do have their debut release, uh, two of the sons of the Allman Brothers coming together, that Devin Allman, son of Greg Allman, um, I like his stuff more than... Um, uh, forget the name of the other guy in the Yeoman Betts, but the son of Dickie Betts, uh, what his name is. But his solo stuff versus Devin Allman's stuff, I like his stuff better, vocal-wise at least. So, yeah, I picked this up. I do actually now have uh, Miami Moon by Devin Allman, the brand new album on order through Anthony at Sound Exchange. Uh, when that comes in, I'll have that. You'll probably see that next week. I got a number of things on order through Anthony because Amazon has been dropping the ball. Not only are they shipping things not on to arrive on release day, but they're super backed up. Stuff is going into back order. I don't know what's going on with them, but can't get the new LA Guns through them. Can't get the new uh, Van Stephenson album or Stevenson album. Um, just number of different things like that. So I've put them on order through Anthony and uh, have to wait for it that way. And so those were the things that I picked up. But I did want to also point out two other releases that came out that I've already shown you guys. But just as a reminder, for those of you that watch this for the new releases to know the other stuff that came out that I got earlier because I did reviews on these things. But there was a brand new Mike Tramp, Songs of White Lion, Volume 2, definitely worth checking out if you're a fan of not only Mike Tramp, but White Lion, him doing new interpretations of it. So it's more in the style of Mike Tramp solo, but redoing these White Lion songs electrically and very, very good job at the stuff. Marcus Nan, the guitar player, does a phenomenal job uh, replicating and achieving the feel of the original Vito Barada soloing and that sort of stuff on it. So there's that. And of course, Mike Tramp's White Lion out on tour now kicked off on Friday. 
August 23rd, same day that album came out. So a great way to, you know, to tie it all in together. And then um, Alan Parsons Project dropped Pyramid, a uh, seven disc box set, two LP, um, four CD, one, I think it's a Blu-ray that's in here. Uh, lots and lots of cool material, basically going through the entire process of how this was recorded, building the tracks up so you get the original album remastered, which is so good. I got a single disc of it as well because the remastering in here is basically like a remix. It just is that night and day different that whatever they were able to do to it made it so much clearer and crisper and more vibrant and alive than the previous remaster. I'm super, super stoked by that. But the box set itself has demos and, and song developments in the studio, as well as 5.1 surround sound on the Blu-ray, a killer book in here. So just wanted to point those things out as I have done reviews and unboxings of those guys previously about a month back when I got all of that stuff to make you guys aware of it but just letting you know it came out. So, but there you go, 10 things that I picked up. Hopefully that sparks some interest in you, like I said, either reminding you to dig back in your collection, maybe for something old like Alaska or taking another look at some Steely Dan or just something uh, new that came out that you weren't thinking of, like maybe that Jimmy Wayne Jameson sounds interesting to you. So there you go. Enjoy that stuff and uh, certainly tune back in next week. I do new episodes of um, the new music finds every Wednesday for you guys collecting together all the stuff that I got. So you can stay up to date on that, but also get turned on to new things. All right, everyone, take care, have a good one, and I'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.